Hello golfers, John Duggan coming to you with some more car side coaching. Today, I'd like to talk to you about what I call the myth of consistency. Lots of golfers come to me asking for, begging for, and wishing and hoping for more consistency. And, well, the real problem is that Consistency would encompass the entire normal distribution curve. That means that you're going to have about a 10, 15, maybe even 20 shot difference between your best golf and your worst golf. And almost all those would be considered perfectly normal. That's a bummer. But along with expectations, sometimes realizing exactly what you can expect from golf is helpful. Instead of thinking that you're going to be consistent, that you're going to consistently hit this golf ball a certain way and consistently score a certain amount, leads to enormous frustration that is unnecessary because, once again, your expectations are out of whack. A couple years ago, Jason Day's low score, he was number one in the world, so it didn't suck at golf. Still doesn't suck, by the way. But Jason Day's low score was 62. Do you know what his high score was for the year? 83. Your results may not be that much different. It's just how it is in the game of golf. So with that in mind, what you have to do is you have to move the middle of your curve. You have to improve your driving skills. Maybe you just have to hit one less golf ball out of play off the tee. Maybe you have to hit one more solid strike instead of a fat or ball sculled into a hazard per round and you will be moving your curve down toward lower hitting. You're still going to have the range it's kind of interesting. The distribution of scores from Tiger Woods back in the day was exactly the same curve as that for a six handicap. That's coming from Rick Jensen, one of my very dear friends. It's a, well, you know, it's not all in your head. This game is certainly not all in your head. But the way that you perceive what's going on and the way that you handle what's going on really can affect your game greatly. One of my best students, Nicky G, Nick Giannellis, triple bogey the first hole in a tournament. And he says, Coach, it was just a black marble. Now, it, we have black marbles, white marbles, and gold marbles. The black marbles are the, and this is again from Rick Jensen, happily stolen, by the way, with permission. 25% of your shot's gonna be bad. 25 going to be great, and 50% of them are going to be average. And Nick hit that shot, thinned a uh, wedge over a green into Never Never Land, and trill bogey the hole, and came back with 10 birdies. Bogey free the rest of the way around golf. He just chalked up that terribly inconsistent. That was an outlier for him, even. That wasn't even in his curve. He chalked that up to a black marble and just went on. So again, it comes down to, I want you to do your very best one shot at a time, accept the results and move on. And by the way, about that, I was having a wonderful golf lesson and my student hit a golf ball with a driver, with a driver people, and it was 20 yards right of the target. And he said, what's that one? I go, I don't care. He's like, what? I said, I don't, 20 yards right doesn't qualify as a miss. And furthermore, perfect's not coming, but once in a great while. That ball is more than good enough to play golf. And he said, yeah, oh, I, I could play that all over. I said, yeah, be careful of trying to fix a certainly good enough shot because that can create what we call a two-way miss. And just so you know, two-way misses really suck. 
Okay. John Dunnigan out. Hit him great.